Welcome to Calculus 1. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about how to find limits graphically and numerically. Uh, I mentioned the word limit in the prior recordings, talking about how we go from pre-calculus material to a limit process and to calculus. And the notion of a limit is a fundamental to the study of calculus. Okay, the notion of a limit and that remember that I used the concept of a second line, tangent line, um, to explaining the limit process as the second line approaches okay, the tangent line. Okay. Um, when such a limit when those kind of limiting position exist, eventually the slope of a tangent line is becomes the limit for the slope of a secant line. I kind of explained that a little bit today. Well, I'm actually going to use an actual function. Okay, so let's say here I have a function x to the third minus one over x minus one. From a pre-calculus concept, we know that if I say if I put a one here for x in the denominator, the function will be undefined. Okay. So that's using a pre-calculus -cal pre concept. So what I'm going to do is use this problem, use this function to introduce the concept of a limit. So what I want to do is, if, is to explain the limit of this function, x to the third minus 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches to that number one, where x cannot be one. Okay, what's gonna happen as the x getting close, as the x value getting closer and closer to one? Okay, what will happen to the limit itself? So, first, let's begin to graph this function. Uh, I'm gonna say x to the third minus one, close parenthesis, divided by x minus one. So once I type in this rational function and graph it, I see that this is turned out to be a parabola. Okay. And if I go to the table, I can see when x equal to one, it gives me an error message for the y value because the function is not defined at x equal to one. But that's not the same thing as you know as the limit of the function when whenever x is approaching to one. Okay. That's a whole different kind of concept. Let me take a picture of this and kind of begin to draw this a little bit. So what I got here right now is saying if this point is x equal to 1 right here, we know it doesn't exist. Let me use an open circle here. All right, there's an open circle. What's happening as x is approaching to 1 from the right hand side and from the left hand side? <clears throat> so let me just kind of move this picture out this way, kind of make it larger. So there's a hole, and here's my part of my function here. You know what? Let me just kind of draw it like this, and I'll put a little hole right here. Okay, so that hole is where x is 1. Alright, so what will happen as my x approaches to 1? So let's say here is my x value, here are my y values. Alright, I want my x value eventually approaching to 1, as close as I can get it. So I'm going to just do a couple of them. I'm going to say 0.99. I'm going to choose x to be 0.99, very, very close to 1. And I'm going to choose another one is 0.999. Alright, this is approaching from the left. Again, on the right-hand side, approaching from the right-hand side, I say this is 1.001. And another point, 1.01. .01. All 
right, so let's go to our calculator here. I'm going to show you how to do this uh, numerically by using a calculator, which will go to second calc number one value, tapping 0.99. Very close to x equal to one, but not quite. My y value is actually 2.970. Let's get even closer. Almost to three. Point nine nine nine. And it's actually gonna be two point nine nine seven. Alright, when x equal to one, we don't know what that is. Alright, approaching from the right. Let's say if I Having 1.01. Okay, it gave me 3.030. All right, if I'm getting as close as I can to 1, let's do 1.001. <coughs> that would be 3.003. So clearly you can see as X approaching from the left to one and approaching from the right towards one, eventually my limits or my Y value will get closer and closer to three. So the limits as this function, okay, getting arbitrarily close to, excuse me, as the X is getting closer and closer to one, my function is getting arbitrarily closer to the limit, which is three. Okay, that would be the limit for this function. So at that hole, as x approaching to one, my y value will actually turn out to be a three rather than an undefined for the pre-calculus concept. So if I were turn, you know, if I were take a look at the limits of this function as x approaching to one, the y value will be arbitrarily getting closer and closer to 3. Okay, that's the introduction of limit. Alright, so we would denote this problem as a limit of the function as x approaching to 1, the limit will become 3. So informally, if the function f of x become arbitrarily close to a single number L, like the 3 earlier, as the x approaches c, which is my 1, from the right and the left, okay, then the limits of the function f of x as x approaches to c will be l. And we'll denote that as the limit of the function as x approaching to c is going to be a numerical number right here for right now, a single number l. Now a more of a formal definition, okay, of a limit is described by Augustine Lewis Cauchy. All right, he is he used something called the epsilon delta definition of a limit, which is which is we actually still use today. What it's saying is, if epsilon represents a small positive number, then the phrase f of x, the function, become arbitrarily close to a single number L. As my function, f of x, getting closer and closer to L. Okay, what that means is that function, f of x, will actually, over the y value, will lie in the interval of that number minus the epsilon or that number plus the epsilon. Okay, so what that means is if my, let me draw a graph right here. Let's say the, the L is that three earlier. Okay, I can pick an epsilon. All right, that is bigger than zero. So above that L will be L plus that epsilon. Okay, below that L will be L minus the epsilon. As the function getting closer and closer to that L, 
Okay. As that function getting closer to getting closer closer to that L, that means that L will lies in between that interval from this number to that number. All right. But at the same time, and, and uh, at the same time, as the x approach to c, that means there exists a positive number called delta, <coughs> such that your x value will lie in either in the interval of the c, which is is actually our one earlier, minus delta or 1 to delta or to C. So C minus delta will be to the left side of that C or it will be in the interval of to the right hand side of that C. Okay, C plus delta. Alright, and we will denote that as X minus C inside the absolute value that's between 0 to delta. So let me show you back to the problem we just did. The delta will be referring to okay the distance okay the distance from the x value to the c. So if you look at the one on, from, coming from the right, okay, the distance between 1.001 to the c is actually 0.001. Okay, that would be my delta. Same thing if I will go from the left side using the 0.009. Alright, so this side, oops, excuse me, one more zero. So this side will be, this side right here will be the C minus delta. This side will be C plus delta. And we use the absolute value to keep everything positive at the same time. Alright, so down here, epsilon associated with our L, which is our Y value. So if you look, 3.003 .003 is above the y value 3. So this point 0.003 will be the epsilon, same as the one on this side. Okay. So what the epsilon delta argument is saying is let f be a function defined on an open interval containing a c and let L to be a real number. As the limit of the function appro approaches L arbitrarily, arbitrarily getting closer to L as X approaching to C, what that means is for each epsilon that is bigger than zero, there exists a delta that is smaller than that, okay, that if the X minus C as X approaching to C lies within Okay, lies within the distance of delta, then the function will get arbitrarily close to L within the distance of epsilon. Okay, so what that means is as my limits getting arbitrarily getting closer to L, that distance, okay, to L, which is called epsilon, all right. As, as I'm getting closer and closer, there exists a delta such that delta will either be C minus delta or C plus delta. You will actually, the delta will actually be always be smaller than the epsilon. Okay. So whatever epsilon I'm going to pick, that means However close I want, however close I want the epsilon to, okay, my L. So if I want my epsilon to be 0.001, okay, distance to my L, then I can find a delta that will be even smaller than that as x approaching to 1. Okay, that's the delta epsilon definition. All right. So let's try another example, okay? Uh, there's a lot of number, I'm only gonna do um, one, two, three, four, four of those. So here is my function, the limit of my function as x approaching to eight. Let's see what happens as approaching to eight. 
All right, so you can look at the difference, go from 8.001 to 8. That difference is going to be the delta, okay? Same thing from 7.999 to 8.001 distance. So let me graph this function real quick. Uh, x minus 8 close it divided by x squared minus 7x minus 8. Alright, so if I graph it, it looks something like this. If I go to my table, go down to x equal to 8. I can see my function does not exist at x equal to 8. Alright, but what, what about its limits as I'm approaching to 8 from the right and the left? So let's try this using a calculator here. Uh, I'm going to type in 7.99 and that will give me 0 0.1112. All right, getting even closer. Seven point nine nine nine. All right, point one 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 one. All right, let's go. Let's go coming from the right. 8.001. Well, I am 0 0.001 away from my C for my 8. My Y value, 0 0.1111 if I round if I make the 9 go up. Alright, if I will do 0 0.01 distance away, 8.01. It's point one 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 zero one. All right. So we can conclude that as my x approaching to eight, my limit of the function, okay, is going to be arbitrarily getting closer and closer to be point one one one. Now these two numbers is actually already rounded. So if I were even go even closer to eight, okay, eventually my limit will reach 0 0.1111. All right, and that's how we find <coughs> our limits. Okay, we can estimate our limit numerically by using a graphing calculator. All right, so you can tell uh, it's kind of hard to to find the epsilon because because these numbers are already rounded. <coughs> But we can see the delta here, the distance from here to here, our delta, okay, is point zero zero one. Okay. So whatever this whatever this difference to this actual value to that actual value, that difference is our epsilon, which is actually in the drawing here. Okay. So what the delta epsilon argument or the definition saying is if I pick my epsilon, whatever the epsilon I pick, if I will pick a little bit smaller than than the one I picked prior, then I can find a delta that will actually be even smaller than that epsilon I picked. You know, as I begin to what uh, to move towards what uh, more towards the C. Okay. Alright, let's try an example here um, with a linear function. And I'm going to show you how to find the largest delta. Okay. <clears throat> so for 7x plus 7, linear function, 7x plus 7, if I want to um, get closer to 7, um, why don't I pick? Why don't I pick? as close as I can, let's say coming from the left 6.999 it's practically a 56 here if I round it coming from the right 7.001 56 
56 yeah, that's probably 56 if I round it so I can estimate our, my limit for this linear function to be 56 now how do I find the larger delta such that f of x my function minus the limit will be less than 0 0.01 whenever okay whenever as x approaching to c okay that will be within the distance of a delta all right i know this 0 0.01 is an epsilon because from the definition f of x minus l okay is less than epsilon so what i want to show What I want to show is my function 7x plus 7 absolute value of my function minus my L is less than 0 0.01 whenever as my x approaching to c which is my 7 that will be less than this delta okay so i got to make a connection from this format to that format so if i combine like term here 7 minus 56 will be negative 49 so what I get here is absolute value of 7x minus 49 will be less than epsilon. Factor out a 7 because that will make it look even more like x minus 7 here less than 0 0.01. So to get ab to get absolute absolute value of x minus 7 by itself, I would divide both sides. By seven, so that will give me <clears throat> x minus seven less than 0 0.01 over seven. So this format match this format now. So that means my delta will be 0 0.01 over seven, which we can figure out in the calculator. 0 0.01 divided by seven is about 0 0.00. One four. So whatever epsilon I pick, I can always find a delta that is smaller than that. So as x approaches, okay, as x is approach to seven, my function move arbitrarily close to my limit fifty six. So this point zero zero one four would be the largest delta I can find. Now anything smaller than this, okay? Imagine anything smaller than this delta that will f that will make the distance to the seven even closer. There, then <clears throat> my function would get closer to the limit as well. Now, if I now this this concept is from that previous problem. Now if that if we say the epsilon is 0 0.01, you know, like it was given to us, we actually found the larger delta to be 0 0.0014. Now that does not really prove that the limit of function actually existed. Okay. So to show the existence of a limit, we can find a delta for every epsilon. Okay, for every epsilon that is given doesn't have to be just 0 0.01 for any given for any epsilon okay that I want to choose so what we want to do here is to show okay the function f of x okay remember the format the f of x minus the limit okay is less than epsilon so what I want to show is that my function as it move arbitrarily 
close to my limit, which is my 4, okay, will be less than an epsilon. Whenever the x approaches to 2, okay, there's less than delta. Alright, so to connect, to make a connection, I can go ahead and simplify the negative 2 minus 4, and that will give me absolute value of 3x minus 6 is less than my epsilon. If I try a 3, that will be 3 times absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. Divide both sides by 3 x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 3. So for whatever epsilon I'm going to pick, okay, I will choose a delta that will be epsilon divided by 3. Okay. So if I will graph this problem, Okay, if I will graph this problem, let's say I'm going to pick, I know my limit is, uh, I know I need to approach to 2, okay, I know my limit is 4, so let's say I'm going to pick epsilon to be 0.1, excuse me, 0 0.01. So, right below my limit 4, okay, that will be 3.99, alright, so I will pick a delta that is epsilon over 3. So 0 0.01 divided by 3 will be 0 0.003, repeating. All right, and to the left of it, that'll be 2 minus that. So I will choose as 1.996, repeating. Six repeating. So let me just do do let me just do this side, okay? Let me just do this one side. Graph my function, 3x minus 2. Graph it, linear function. Alright, I'm gonna show you this in the calculator in reverse, because I can only type in x value here. So this is epsilon divided. This delta is epsilon divided by 3, so if I were typing 1.99, a lot of 6, then my y value will be very close to 3.99. Very good. Okay, so whatever epsilon, so for every epsilon I pick, I can always pick a delta that is a largest delta that is epsilon divided by 3. Okay kind of weird to think about it in reverse most of the time we, we actually go from X to the Y but the definition has a lot to do with pick an epsilon pick the distance that is to the limit itself and then find the Delta okay that is even smaller than that because smaller than that means it's getting closer and closer to that um, to that to that um, C that value I want to approach because the closer I can approach it from the x direction, then eventually that will lead. Okay, eventually that will lead <clears throat> these y values also moving arbitrarily closer to the limit itself. All right, and that will conclude our video. Thank you for watching.